Yeah, this is dedicated to fathers. You know who you are. Dedicated to you. Dedicated to fathers. Fathers taken away during slavery. Fathers lynched during slavery. Fathers who died under colonialism. Fathers who are mass incarcerated. Fathers who are executed while mass incarcerated. Fathers who have been shot by the police. Fathers who have been shot who are in the police. Fathers who have been killed by other fathers. Fathers who have killed themselves. Fathers who are denied access to their children. Fathers who don't want access to their children. Fathers who kill their children. Fathers who don't know their children. Fathers who have abandoned their children. Fathers who've been abandoned by their children. Fathers who are absent but present in the lives of other children. Fathers who are there but emotionally unavailable to their children. Fathers who are present there, doing their job, holding it down, taking responsibility, who hear words like dad and father every day. This is dedicated to my absent father who fell in love with a beautiful woman, my mother who fell under his spell. And then society stepped in and said a black man from Jamaica and a white woman from Wales falling in love was unacceptable in the 50s. Much the same as couples who fell in love during slavery and apartheid or any other period in history that banned black love. I lived in the six houses before the age of two when I heard the words no dogs, no iris, no coloreds over and over again. And then in 1958, a race riot happened, people got hurt, my mother lost the love of her life while I lost my father. I lost my father. I then went on to be bullied, tormented, ridiculed and stigmatised at school because I had no father. And from childhood to adulthood to manhood to fatherhood and to grandfatherhood, there was no navigation system in my life. And the pattern of father absent repeats itself like karma and like a yo-yo that orphaned go up and down. So this is to you, my father, a man of flesh and bones, intellect and knowledge, culture and history. If only you'd been there. This is dedicated to you. Dear Dad, even though I'm a grown man, I'm hurting right now and experiencing deep pain. You, the foundation of my life, was never there and when you were, it was too late. You'd gone again, dead, disappeared without trace. I was a child who'd become a man, then back to being a child with a missing link, thrown into the dark forest, trying to survive the terror. I'd been robbed only to be scarred by memories that at times became never-ending nightmares where there was no escape. You see, huh, you see, yeah, this is hard. I've done well externally, but internally I'm still messed up and at times I'm like a damaged parcel, no return to the sender this time. I had a fear of getting close to those I loved, scared of intimacy in case I got rejected, frightened of keeping good people in my life. And more importantly, I felt incomplete because half of me was missing, gone, lost in action, absent without leave. I felt that I deleted you off the hard drive of my life, you my father. You see, I'd been rejected based on my complexion, my physical size, my background for being clever and for not having a father, for not having, uh, not having a father in my life. You see, I'd always felt like an outsider, not belonging to the club of those who had their father around them. And you know something, Dad, that really hurt. We met when I was 32 and to this day I still try to cover up my pain with fancy words and denial because of insecurity and insecurity and insecurity and fear dad I can't curse you for the absence but you never came to my school you never looked at my homework you never watched me play sports bought me a birthday card or taught me you never dad you never taught me how to ride a bike because you weren't there dad you just weren't there there was nothing just a void, a dark hole, emptiness where I'd been swallowed up by a tidal wave of pain and an avalanche of loss. Loss. An avalanche of loss. 
I remember meeting my family in Jamaica for the first time when it was like climbing a big mountain and finding gold at the end of the rainbow. Little did I know that a couple days later I'd be hearing your voice for the last time as I heard you'd gone to bed and died peacefully. I remember vividly returning to England to learn you were cremated, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, still haven't seen where you were scattered, Dad. And Dad, every day I grieve inside and still struggle to get over your death. And for years I asked my mum about you and she would be evasive Which would result in a big argument to the point where we disliked each other And you know I never let mum's pain stop me from keeping you alive in my heart And always gave you the benefit of the doubt Which I now know was wrong As you took a piece of all of us with you which still lingers to this day Now she's gone and I'm an orphan and outwardly I was like a walnut, but inside I felt like a jelly coconut that has been eaten where the empty shell was then cast to one side. <sighs> See dad, this is hard, gets harder to say these words. Because at times I felt helpless, useless and drowned in self-pity, anger and despair, not knowing which way to turn. And I've done stupid things, made rash decisions and continued to behave like I was in control and everything was alright. The truth is I was a broken man and the amount of times I was told to let go and move on with my life and not to allow you to get to me. But how was I supposed to let go of something I never had? How was I supposed to move forward, Dad? What was I supposed to do when I was held so fast for the longing of a son needing his father? But there's a question I want to ask Did you long for me, Dad? Did you long for me? Let me ask you that question How could I not allow your absence to get to me When I was constantly being reminded by other people that I never had a father? You tell me, Dad, how was I supposed to do that? You tell me, tell me, tell me, Father and for most of my life I've been a nomad Moving around from place to place, person to person Never feeling settled when I did, never trusted it You could have solved that problem You could have solved that problem You You could have gave me the security of knowing I always had a place to stay in times of trouble I always wanted to hear the voice on the end of the phone But I never did because you weren't there dad and you know what's upsetting? We could have done things together, shared experiences. If you don't only made one big decision in your life to have me, have me, your son, in your life. But you didn't. You see, you took that right away from me. Yes, my right, as you were obligated to me as I was your son, as you signed up to be my dad. We could have taken pictures together, shared rare moments, talked about life together, shown me things I didn't know. We could have grown old together. Yes, we could have grown old together. And you could have shown me things I didn't know. See, I don't hate you, Dad. I've never hated you, but I've been hurt. And I'm trying my hardest to deal with what you meant to me. And I've traveled and I've been on many journeys, but none greater than the journey I'm facing right now. It's taking me to places I didn't know existed. So I sit and listen to friends talking about their fathers, secretly longing to be in their shoes and share my own experiences about you. However, I have no stories, no experiences, no memories, no celebrations and no relationship with you. You see, Dad, let me tell you something, because right now I'm feeling this. See, it was never just about me, Dad. You didn't just leave me, you left my mom. Yeah, remember that woman you fell in love with? My mum. And in spite of her resistance and resilience in her quiet moments, she shed enough tears like I did. My mum was a woman who you missed out on. You see, bringing up a troubled child like me was never easy for her, but yet she deserves the highest honours. It was her, not you, that brought me to manhood. Yes, it was her that brought me to manhood. But you never understood. And like a warrior she persevered and never gave up, never let me down A load that you should have shared and carried, Dad But today, you're forgiven Yeah, today, Dad I took that decision, today you're forgiven As I have now officially let you go You can see, Dad, I can now be open and honest with my feelings as a big man 
smiles and whistles. I can even call you dad, although you didn't earn that title. See, because this is no longer about you, this is about me. And for the record, you are now a grandfather and a great grandfather. You see, this bird with a broken wing can now fly. Yeah, I can fly, Dad. Flying like an eagle in the sky. But you know, it still hurts to this day. You see, my broken heart has repaired itself and my spirit feels at peace. Where there's no more lingering doubts about who I was, who I am and who I will be in the future. But right now I need to send a message to the brothers in the community. To mans in jail. To mans who are thinking of taking their own life. To the young brothers who are getting wild. To new fathers, fathers yet to be. Fathers who are thinking about becoming fathers. Remember these few words. Children need their fathers to be there, constant present, to provide love and support whilst helping them navigate the difficulties of life. Children need to know that fatherhood is more than just presents at Christmas, the occasional birthday card, or a trip to the cinema. And for me, it's time for some self-reflection, self-forgiveness, atonement and redemption. It's time for me to let go of my past mistakes and pray for a brighter day and to see the light through the dark. I want to say to my children, sorry for the things I haven't said, haven't done, didn't know or never even heard. To my grandchildren, I want to say that life is never easy, full of bumps and bruises and you have a father regardless of who they are. And to my mother, to my mother, did you hear me dad? To my mother, the woman you left, understand, this is to my mother, mom. I want to ask you for forgiveness today as sometimes my anger got in the way as I blame you for what my father, for what my father never did. So I'm sorry, ask for forgiveness. To my stepfather, I want to apologize. Difficult as you were, I never really gave you a chance because you weren't my dad. So to my stepfather, again I want to say sorry and I apologize. To the love of my life who has repaired my damaged soul I want to thank you with all my heart for making this fractured life complete again And I want to say To someone I never met, never saw But I've always lived with That's lingered in my heart for all my life To my twin brother who I never knew who died at birth But somehow your memory today is connected to mine And today I want to let the world know that I want to let you know, twin brother That today we have come together Two halves to make one So finally I come to you, Dad As I spoke these thousand words As I speak these Thousand words, Dad I want to let you know the time is going to come soon when we're going to meet in heaven. We're going to be there together and we're going to spend time in eternity. We're going to spend all the time that we miss. And maybe you can tell me about you and I can tell you about me and we can be father and son reunited. Yes, I am still your son. You are still my father and you will always be and I will always be to you. And I want to say something today, something that I've never really said before to you. I want to say, Father, those three words. I want to say that I love you. I always will love you. In spite of the pain. So I just want to say, Dad, I love you. Mom, I love you. Children, I love you. Grandchildren, I love you. To my friends, I love you. To the community I come from, I love you. And to my partner, to the woman that's put me back together, I love you. Peace.